Good morning, faithful listener. You are listening to the Bible Explained podcast, where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and stay tuned as we read through the book of Deuteronomy. Hi, guys, and good morning. And you know what? If any of you ever want to contact me with ideas or topics that you think would be really cool for the YouTube channel. I'm trying to build that up. I am not a creative person at all, actually. I, I struggle greatly with creativity. And people always think I'm, I'm very creative. They're like, Jen, you're so creative at everything. And I'm like, no, no, I am not creative at anything. I can take an idea that somebody gives me and bring it to life I'm not saying that's not a gift I have. I do have that gift, but I am not creative. I cannot think up the idea for the life of me. That's why I need people like you guys to help me out with the YouTube channel for different topics you are interested in or apologetic questions you might have. I'd love to hear some of your ideas. So contact me at my email address. You'll find that linked in the description of this episode. But also, if you want to just contact me because you have a prayer request or you want to introduce yourself or share your testimony, something like that, I'd love to hear that as well. And just in general, if you guys want to contact me, feel free to don't hesitate to reach out. But let's go ahead and jump into scripture. Let's read Deuteronomy 28 today, verses 58 through 68. That's a lot of eights. 28, 58 through 68. Feel free to pause the podcast to go grab your Bible and your cup of coffee or your cup of tea. But let's go ahead and enjoy scripture together this morning. If you will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahweh your God, then Yahweh will make your plagues and the plagues of your offspring fearful, even great plagues, and of long duration, and severe sicknesses, and of long duration. He will bring on you again all the diseases of Egypt, which you are afraid of, and they will cling to you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, Yahweh will bring them on you until you are destroyed. You will be left few in number, even though you were as the stars of the sky for multitude, because you didn't listen to Yahweh your God's voice. It will happen that as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so Yahweh will rejoice over you to cause you to perish and to destroy you. You will be plucked from the land that you are going in to possess. Yahweh will scatter you among all the peoples from one end of the earth until the other end of the earth. There you will serve other gods, which you have not known, you nor your fathers, even wood and stone. Among these nations you will find no ease. There will be no rest for the sole of your foot. But Yahweh will give you there a trembling heart, failing of eyes, and a pining of soul. Your life will hang in doubt before you. You will be afraid night and day, and you will have no assurance of your life. In the morning you will say, I wish it were evening, and at evening you will say, I wish it were morning, for the fear of your heart, which you will fear, and for the sights which your eyes will see. Yahweh will bring you into Egypt again, with ships, by the way of which I told you that you would never see it again. There you will offer yourselves to your enemies, for male and female slaves, and nobody will buy you. So in the previous episodes where we talked about the curses of Israel, The word if is repeated a lot. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Even here in verse 58, it says, if you will not observe to do all the words of this law, then this is what's going to happen, basically. So that word if means that there's a choice. The people can choose to obey God's laws and live in complete comfort, basically, or they can choose to not obey God's laws. And here's what would happen. Now, a couple reasons why this would happen was, A, God entered a covenant with his people. A covenant means a solemn promise where the people promised to follow God and God promised to be uh, the people's God, basically. And God also promised that if the people followed his words and worshipped him, that he would, in fact, bless them beyond measure. But if they refused to, if they refused to keep their promise to him, then all these curses would begin to happen. And they would happen very slowly. As you can see from the last couple episodes, if you didn't get a chance actually to go listen to those, I recommend it. But if if you've been paying attention, you'll see that all these curses happen very slowly and they start getting just worse and worse and worse. You know, they start out pretty bad, but all of a sudden they're like totally destroyed here in the portion we talked about today. It says that, These sicknesses aren't going to just be like itches and boils and irritations anymore. Now they're going to be fearful, great 
plagues is what it says in verse 59 and of long duration and severe sicknesses of long duration. It says he will bring on you again all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, but they will cling to you. So the people were scared of some of the diseases that surrounded them when they were living in Egypt. But God says that those same sicknesses that they were terrified of, like plagues and, you know, illnesses that caused people to die, these plagues and illnesses are going to overtake the people if they refuse to listen to God's voice. Now, during all of this, I do believe that there was a chance for the people to repent. They could have repented probably at any point and God would have relented and begin to to bless them again. Because we see when God eventually begins to to fulfill a lot of these curses, he tells the people are going to happen. Years uh, later, after this, you can see that God keeps telling his people in the prophets and through the prophets, come back to me, come back to me, come back to me, and I, I want to bless you again. I want to not punish you. I want to do these things. But God is not afraid to punish people who refuse to listen to him. He is not afraid of it because he is very, very just. He's not going to allow his people remain in sin and remain in their evil, sinful ways. He's just not going to allow it because he is God. And God requires righteousness, especially from his own people. God requires it because righteousness is healthy, not just for us, but everybody and everything that surrounds us. It's healthy for our communities. It's healthy for our nation. It's healthy for our pets. Like righteousness is truly healthy. I was just reading a proverb today that says that the righteous person cares for their animals. The righteous person cares for all animals, actually. But wicked people are always cruel. So people who are wicked don't have any regard for small life. They don't have regard for little animals. They don't care. That's so that's wickedness. Righteousness even blesses the animals is what scripture teaches. So righteousness is good. And when people start falling away from righteousness, God is going to act. He's always going to act and he's going to act very slowly and very mercifully so that people turn back to him. But if people refuse to turn back to him, it actually says here in verse 63, here's what it says. And this probably causes a lot of people to scratch their head. It says, it will happen that as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you. So Yahweh will will rejoice over you to cause you to perish and to destroy you. God rejoices when righteousness wins. When the people begin to get so evil and so bad, and so wicked, God actually rejoices in destroying that wickedness. However, God also rejoices in rewarding good. That's what it says. As Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you. So God rejoices in giving people good gifts. It actually says in in scripture that all gifts are from the Father. Like all gifts come from above. And since the Israelites and anybody who enters a covenant with God and every single one of us who is saved has entered into a covenant promise with God because we have promised him that we will serve him, right? Anybody who enters that covenant promise with God automatically becomes his children. Like you and I are part of God's children. We are part of God's family. He adopted us into his family when we begin to serve him. God rejoices in giving his children good gifts. Even Jesus says that. Jesus says that you fathers here on earth, you love giving good gifts to your kids. You know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much more does God the Father, who is not evil, who is extremely righteous, the definition of righteousness, how much more and how much better are his gifts going to be? So God loves giving gifts to his children. But as his children, we also can get punished by God. There's a verse that says that you will know you are part of God's family if God punishes you, if God chastises you. I can't remember where I read that. I'm very sorry. But that portion of scripture goes on to say that punishment is not fun when it's happening. Like when God punishes us for doing something wrong, it's not fun. (laughs) 
We don't like the punishment. Just as your child, if you have children, don't like it when you punish them for doing something wrong, but you do do it because you love your kids and you want them to grow up to be healthy adults and not irritating adults that people don't like. You punish your children for them. And God does the same thing to us. The Israelites were God's children. They entered into a covenant promise with God. He both rejoices in doing good for them when they are acting as his children the right way. But when they go off serving other gods and and refusing to obey God the Father, God also rejoices in punishing their wicked behavior. He rejoices in that because not only is he teaching us a lesson for future generations to not do this, but he's also removing wickedness from the world. And that is a good thing. It's a good thing for everybody when wickedness is gone. It's a good thing. Everybody likes when wickedness is gone. (laughs) Even wicked people (laughs) like it when other wicked things are gone. I mean, everybody likes it when wickedness is removed. Unfortunately, we don't see a lot of that happening these days. We don't see wickedness being removed. We see it being not even just tolerated, but being taught that it's good to be wicked. It's good to be evil. It's good to be sinful. But that's not the case. And unfortunately, as as our society begins to teach wickedness as being good, God will eventually act on that. He will act on that. Even if those people didn't enter a covenant promise with him, it does say in scripture that God does always destroy wickedness. Always. There was actually a verse I just read today from Proverbs 16. It says, <clears throat> uh, Proverbs 16, verse 4, the Lord has made everything for his own purpose. Purpose is even the wicked for a day of disaster. It doesn't matter if those wicked people entered into a covenant promise with him or not. If they continue in their wickedness, God will give them their day of disaster. And that will be better for everybody, except for the wicked people, in the long run. But then God goes on to say what's going to happen to the Israelites if they still refuse to listen to him after all these great and terrible plagues and sicknesses. Yahweh will scatter you among all the peoples from one end of the earth to the other end. The people will begin to serve other gods, gods that they never knew, is what it says, wood and stone god. So Yahweh God is not going to be their god anymore. They're going to be worshiping these these wood and stone gods that can't hear, see, move, talk, uh, do anything, think. They can't do a single thing, but the people are going to worship them, and Yahweh is going to take his hand away from them. It says... Among these nations, you will find no ease. There will be no rest for your feet. Yahweh will give you there a trembling heart, failing of eyes and a pining of soul. So these people are going to be spiritually dark. They're going to be so unhappy. You know, they might think that serving these new gods or whatever is going to give them some amount of happiness. But in the end, they're going to be depressed and anxious and longing for something else. They're going to be pining for something, but they won't be able to fill it because they already removed what it was. They removed Yahweh God from their hearts. Your life will hang in doubt before you. You will be afraid night and day. You'll have no assurance of your life. So they're going to be so distressed in these other nations. They're going to be constantly anxious, pining away for something, looking for something else. I mean, That really describes, I think, what our society here is in the United States. Everybody is just looking for something to fulfill them, whether it's drugs or weed or TV or alcohol or something to, like, fulfill them and and to get rid of their depression. seems like everybody has depression nowadays or anxiety, and everybody's, like, pining away for something to fulfill them, but they can't find it. It says, in the morning you will say, I wish it were evening, and at evening you will say, I wish it were morning, for the fear of your heart which you will fear, and for the sights which you your eyes will see. So they're never going to be satisfied, whether it's morning or evening. They're going to be terrified. They're going to be fearful, scared. They're just going to be constantly waiting for something, waiting for something to change, but they're not going to be finding that change they're, they're longing for. Then it says, Yahweh will bring you into Egypt again. 
with ships by a way of which I told you that you would never see it again. There you will offer yourselves to your enemies for male and female servants and nobody will buy you. This happened twice, actually. So the first time, the I think it was the book of Jeremiah, the Israelites went back to Egypt because they were so afraid of the Babylonians. They went back to Egypt and God specifically actually told the people, do not go back to Egypt, but they did anyway. And uh, they ended up getting destroyed in Egypt. So that happened in scripture. But the second time happened, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, after the fall of Jerusalem in 68 AD, I think it was, the Romans actually sold a whole lot of slaves to Egypt. And uh, the Egyptian market was flooded with Israeli slaves that there wasn't enough like rich Egyptians to buy all these slaves. So that's what it says here. They will offer yourselves to your enemies or there you will offer yourselves to your enemies for, for male and female slaves and nobody will buy you. So that was fulfilled after the fall of Jerusalem. And we know that's the fall of Jerusalem. The the people, if you're listening to the book of John right now, we just talked about how the, the people refused to listen that Jesus was the Messiah. So you can see there the the Israelite people refusing to believe in Jesus as the Messiah, refusing to listen to God, helping kill Jesus. So, I mean, all of this that we just read today was definitely fulfilled multiple times in Israeli history. We don't want this to happen. We don't want this to happen anywhere. So we need to pray for our nations. We need to pray that our nations begin to turn to God again. We need to not be fearful of what people think of us either. We need to step up and say what we think and not be scared of other people and what they're gonna say about us. Because in the end, who cares if people name call you on the internet? (laughs) I always get so mad if people do it to me like on my YouTube videos and stuff. I always get so mad, but then I'm like, honestly, who cares? Like this is a stupid comment from somebody who just doesn't wanna listen, but maybe, maybe something I said touched them and they'll think about it in the future. You never know. You never know. So don't be scared to say the truth. Don't be afraid to tell the truth, God's truth. And you never know what kind of revival or what kind of movement your words can start. Alrighty, guys. Well, the giveaway is still going on. You can check that out in the description of this podcast episode. Super easy to enter. Like seriously, all of you guys, I encourage all of you to enter open internationally. Go do that. You'll find that in the description. But guys, just contact me if you have any ideas for the YouTube channel or if you just want to reach out and say hello or if you have a prayer request also. I will see you all on Monday. I really hope you have a fantastically beautiful weekend that the weather is nice for you. That you're able to hang out with your family, friends, and maybe spend some time outside. But as always, guys, happy listening and God bless.